On average, people lose from 50 to 100 hairs every day from their scalp. This may vary based on the factors such as age, gender, genetics, and general health. However, this is a natural part of the hair growth cycle, and it's not usually a cause for concern unless there is a noteworthy increase in shedding or other symptoms present. The hair growth cycle comprises three phases, anagen, growth phase, catagen, the transitional phase, and telogen, the resting phase. During the telogen phase, the hair follicle is dormant, and the hair linked to it gradually falls out, allowing space for new hair to develop and grow. When it comes to male pattern baldness, the hormone DHT latches onto the hair follicles of men genetically predisposed to male pattern baldness. DHT latching onto these hair follicles kills the follicle over time, resulting in miniaturization after each telogen phase. DHT is created when testosterone comes in contact with an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. 5-alpha reductase has two types. Type 1 is produced primarily in the liver and skin and is carried to the prostate via systemic circulation. Type 2 is found in the scalp and prostate. Finasteride prevents the type 2 5-alpha reductase enzyme from turning testosterone into DHT. This causes DHT to be lowered systemically by 70% and on the scalp between 40 to 50%. Dutasteride is similar to finasteride, but it differs in that it prevents both type 1 and type 2 5-alpha reductase enzymes from turning testosterone into DHT. Systemically, it may lower DHT in the male body by upwards of 90%. Some people may find additional success with taking dutasteride because for them there may be some type 1 5 alpha reductase activity in their scalp. Certain drugs such as finasteride, minoxidil, and topical antiandrogens can impact the hair growth cycle. When these drugs interact with the hair growth cycle, they typically shorten the resting phase of hair. This causes shedding to occur, as there are less androgens, specifically DHT, attacking the hair follicles which essentially allows the hair follicles to reset and start growing as if they weren't impacted by DHT and other androgens. For example, when someone begins taking finasteride or utilizing minoxidil, there might be an initial loss of existing hair when the medicine pushes the hair follicles to move from the resting phase, telogen, to the growth phase, anagen, by shortening the resting phase. This shedding is a natural component of the hair growth cycle and is commonly referred to as a shedding phase. A study on the long-term use of finasteride by the Finasteride Male Pattern Hair Loss Study Group published in 2002 found that long-term treatment with finasteride 1 mg a day over 5 years was well tolerated. There was also an interesting portion about shedding that I thought would be important to highlight. Finasteride was found to best work after 2 or more years. This is because finasteride helps to improve the growth cycle of hair by shortening the resting phase and making more hairs enter the active growing phase. Remember, as 5-alpha reductase enzymatic activity decreases in the scalp due to finasteride inhibition, DHT will decrease, and DHT causes the suppression of hair growth. It not being in the scalp as much leads to better hair growth results in the scalp of balding men. The change in the hair growth cycle happens quickly after starting finasteride and can cause the affected hairs to grow in a synchronized state. This means that they will all enter the resting phase and shed around the same time. So sometimes on the internet I see people freaking out because they go from initially getting very good results from finasteride to suddenly seeing finasteride seemingly not work anymore. Now this is usually due to a synchronized shedding phase because around the same time you started using finasteride all of your affected hairs fell out and began to grow again at the same time. So when it's time for them to shed, they all shed around the same time, which makes it look like finasteride isn't working, but really they have to go through multiple growth cycles until they become desynchronized and more independent, and then that's when you'll see a sort of plateau in this synchronized and excess shedding. Even minoxidil and other topical antiandrogens, and now Protax like G2 2029, will all have an impact on the hair growth cycle as they work to reduce the influence of androgens on the scalp. As the androgen levels begin to decrease in the scalp, the affected hairs will shed as they are free to grow better. And through cycles of growing and shedding, eventually they will become more independent 
and desynchronize to the point of a stable hair growth across the scalp and a slowdown of hair loss.